In this video, we're going to be checking out the latest offering from Eufy, and that are these things. These are the Eufy S3 Pros. Now, these are the latest in a long line of security cameras from Eufy, and what we're going to do is what we do in all of our tech review videos. We're going to get these installed. We're going to show you the installation process so you know what you're in for if you do decide to get these. And then we're going to go over and really test them, show you how they work in all different conditions. And then at the end of the video, we're going to go over all the pros and cons that we ran into so you can make an informed decision whether you want to spend your hard-earned money on these or not. Now, full disclosure, because I like to be honest with everybody, I did get sent these from Eufy to review. Although, they're not giving me a script, they're not telling me what to say. I can say whatever I want. And if you've gone through my previous Eufy videos, I've done positive reviews and I've done not so positive reviews. Now, one thing I've noticed with these Eufy cameras, they keep getting bigger. And I'll show you, I've had a long line of these cameras around my house. These were the first ones that I had. They've gone yellow, because he's baked in the sun. Then I had these. These are the first generation of the 4K cameras. And now we have these. These do have a lot of new features in it. So let's go over what Yuki's claiming and then we'll see if it lives up to it. The first thing that they've really been marketing hard is the color night vision. And I've had other cameras with color night vision and those cameras didn't perform that well with the color night vision. So we're gonna see if this thing holds up and if we get really nice resolution out of the color night vision. A lot of their newer cameras do have these spotlights on the front. This one has adaptive spotlights and to be honest with you, I don't know what that means. So we're gonna find out. A big issue everybody complains about is false alerts with the cameras and this thing is supposed to have a couple different ways to battle those. It has infrared but it also supposedly has some sort of radar in it um, that will also help with false detections. We'll see how that works. It has all the AI and self-learning features of the previous cameras, and those are built into the Homebase 3. Um, so these cameras do require the Homebase 3 to function. So you can get them with the Homebase 3, or if you've already got one, you can also buy the cameras separately. And one of the nice things about having the Homebase 3 is inside this thing, you can stick a hard drive, which comes in handy because these cameras supposedly do 24 seven recording if you have them hardwired and you do have the option to hardwire them. So that'll be nice because that's a complaint I've seen a lot with a lot of these other cameras is they only record events. They don't do loop recording. These ones should do loop recording onto the base station. There is also the option to power it with a remote solar panel. If you are mounting these in the shade, you can mount them up with one of these things. Now, if you want to follow at home, I will have a link down in the description in the pinned comment to this thing so you can check out all the specs on their website. And I will also, anytime I come across coupon codes or discounts, because they've always got sales going on, I will have those linked down below as well. But right now, let's get this thing installed. So I'm going to show you the install on this one. I'm actually going to connect two of them to the app so we can run them in the front yard and the backyard. So you start by hopping on your phone and downloading the Eufy app. Uh, if you already have your Homebase 3 installed, great. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through the process of installing your Homebase 3 first. I do have that in another video, and I will have that link down below if you want to check that out. But right now, let's get this thing installed. So with the Homebase already installed, we're going to go into our app here and hit the little plus button and then go down to battery cameras because this is a battery camera. And we have at the very top of the list here, the S3 Pro. Now here's the fun part. This thing has to be close to the base because it uses a tone to connect and the base is on the other side of my house. So come with me. Now my home base lives here inside my media cabinet. So what we're gonna do is we are going to say, I'm already at the location. Press and the sync button until you hear the beep. Listen to the directions. There's a little sync button on the bottom. We're gonna push it, heard the beep. Ready to add device. And if you can hear that little chirping in the background, that's it talking back and forth with the camera. Now the camera that's going in the backyard is going to be overlooking the pool and I'm reusing a mount here from the previous Yuffie camera that was up here. And that camera is going to be directly looking at the pool and it's actually getting southern facing sun so it should actually charge really well in this location. And the second camera is in my front yard. It's overlooking my courtyard. It's right up here. And this solar panel is facing north, uh, northwest. So it's gonna get a little bit of setting sun, but it's not gonna be getting really direct sun during the day, even though where it is, it's sunny. The way it's angled, it's not getting the direct hit. So we'll see how this one works. So we're gonna start our first test outside at night because that is really one of the big things that is the bragging point of this camera. So we're gonna see how well it works. Now, my first shot I'm gonna show is how my house is normally set up. And that is right now we're in the front yard. I've got my light on by the door and I've also got those really cool Eufy lights that run all the way along the bottom of my house. I'll have a video out on that soon, uh, but that's how my house is normally lit. So there already is a bunch of light out here, but let's see what it looks like on the camera. Let's walk over to the camera and get a good shot. 
All right, so right now we're right in front of the camera and we should be recording in the standard mode, which is their standard night vision mode with all my lights on. Next up though, I'm gonna turn all my lights off and see how well it does in total darkness. All right, so now we are set up still in that normal mode, but we have all the lights off. It is as dark as we can get. The only light we've really got out here is the moon up there. So let's walk over to the camera and see what we're getting now. So right now, talking straight to the camera, we're in normal mode with all of our outside lights off. Let's see how it looks. So now we're going to be using another setting in the night vision setting, and this is what they call daylight. So let's see if this looks any different. Let's walk back over to the camera and get a good shot in the daylight mode. So now we're in daylight mode. Just got attacked by a bug there. So now we're in daylight mode. This is what daylight mode looks like. Let's walk back a little bit. You'll be able to see how well you can see my face in this mode. Next mode we're going to play around with is spotlight mode. And I think spotlight mode should actually turn on the lights on this camera. Let's see what happens as we walk. Whoop. There we go, we're in the detection zone. Spotlights are on. These are actually really bright. Let me get a shot behind me here. It's lightening up the entire courtyard, but this is what spotlight, look, spotlight, I can't talk, spotlight mode looks like. Now the next mode we're gonna play around with is the night vision mode with IR. We're gonna do that in the backyard with the other camera that's set up. So this is night vision in infrared. So now I'm gonna do what may be the second most important test other than the night vision test, which is how long it takes on my stopwatch to get an alert from when I move into the detection zone. So this will give you a really good idea when somebody walks up to the front of your house or wherever you have your camera, how long it'll take to get an alert. Now I've gotten a lot of feedback saying I should do this not on Wi-Fi, which is how I used to be doing it. So I've turned off Wi-Fi. So this is as if you're not home, how long it'll take. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to walk into the detection zone and that happens right now, we're gonna start watching that timer. And there's my alert. Um, I stopped it at four seconds, eight, eight, a little bit of lag. So I'm gonna say right around four seconds. And that honestly is really impressive. Um, I don't know why it's going faster. I'm gonna try to get on Wi-Fi. Maybe it's slower on Wi-Fi because that's one of the fastest times I've ever seen. Let's try to get on Wi-Fi. Okay, so second attempt, we're on Wi-Fi. Just, you know, my Wi-Fi at my house is hot garbage. So we're gonna start the test right now. And there's that alert. And maybe a second longer at 5.6 seconds when I stopped it, so rounded down, because it took me a little bit of time, five seconds. Also really impressive. A lot of times I see seven, eight, and nine seconds, so Whatever the camera is doing, it seems to be a little bit quicker or maybe my Wi-Fi is just having a good day. But um, six seconds, five seconds for that and four seconds when I was on my uh, LTE. And I have 4G, not 5G for wireless, just for you following along at home. Now, another security feature of these cameras is that you can talk back and forth to the camera. So if there's somebody at your front door or somebody in your yard that shouldn't be, you can talk to them. So now we're gonna walk up to the camera so you can get a good idea of exactly what the quality of the audio is coming into the camera and if you can make out the person that's talking to you through the camera. But it's also just important to see how well the person who's standing in your front yard can hear you. And this is what that sound quality sounds like. This is me talking through my phone, through the camera. Okay, so we have had these on the house for some time now. We've been playing around with them, playing with the different settings in them, and we've learned a lot. And we've also still had the other Eufy Cam 3s on the house. These are the pros. So what I want to do now is I want to go over kind of the key points of the new camera and kind of talk about whether we were hit or miss on those points. And the first point is it's a 4K camera. So were their older ones. Um, and before that, they were 2K. So they've always had a pretty good image quality, all the cameras that I've had. And this thing, no slouch. It's a 4K camera. And the image quality during daylight hours is the same as the four, sorry, the UV Cam 3. What I did notice with this one though is at nighttime. That's where the big difference was. Um, this thing has a better sensor at night and it gets you that color night vision if that's something that's important to you. What is really nice about the color night vision is with some of the other ones, you either have to have a white light turn on or an infrared light turn on. And when the infrared light turns on, you get black and white. When the white light turns on, you obviously have a white light. The nice part about the color night vision is it can do it without a light. So if you don't want people knowing that the cameras have lit them up, then you don't have to do that. If you want to use that as a security feature, you can. But what I did notice was you do still suffer some of the graininess that I've seen in other 
color night vision cameras. If you're a camera nerd like me, you understand like f-stops and apertures. This thing has a wider aperture than that. These suckers are a 1.4, this is a one. Basically the smaller the number, the bigger the aperture. Think of it like your eyeball. It gets bigger, it lets in more light. So this thing does eat more light than those cameras do. So it does do a better job than low light because of those things. Now I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't know what the adaptive spotlight was, but I figured it out. And another problem that some of the other spotlight cameras have is when that spotlight turns on, it blows the image out. So if somebody is walking up and they have a white t-shirt on or there's a license plate and it's a white license plate, or I live through white, it would blow that out. It would make it too bright and the camera wouldn't pick it up. These ones, it'll actually adjust how bright those LEDs are so it doesn't blow out the highlights, which makes identifying somebody a lot easier. The other thing I wanted to test was the detection range of this thing. And you noticed when I was walking into the courtyard on that timing video, I started my stopwatch right when I came around the corner. Now, on my other cameras, on this one, and on this one, it didn't pick me up and start recording until I was about 15 feet into the courtyard. What I noticed with the footage was this one was detecting me as soon as I rounded the corner. So I went and I grabbed, and I think I have a video of me actually walking out there with it, this thing. This is my laser measuring tape. It's got a little laser on there. It probably shouldn't blind my expensive camera there. Um, I'm going to put that down. Um, so I measured. To the corner and the corner is exactly 41 feet two feet past the supposed detection range and it was detecting me every single time i came around that corner so very impressed with that next thing are the solar panels um, these things have much larger solar panels than the other ones it's deceptively not as larger but these things are significantly larger than the previous solar panels but i want to show you something on the previous ones and this was an issue a lot of people were having this is the old model the threes and it's this delamination that's happening right here these panels are different panels i'll try to hold them up see if they catch focus but the panel itself don't focus on my face there we go um, the panel itself is a different texture and the exterior solar panel is the same stuff. I have a couple other cameras that have this style panel and I have not had the delamination issues. Now, if you do have the delam issues that this one has, I have heard that Eufy is replacing them under warranty, so you can send those back and get new, new ones. But these have more durable outdoor panels as well as generating more juice. And speaking of that juice, um, I can report back that these panels did do a really good job. Now, something I noticed when I was hanging up the cameras is the one I have in my front yard does not get direct sunlight. The one I have in my backyard in the video, I said, oh, this will get direct sunlight. It doesn't. I stuck it underneath a two by six beam. So the thing is pretty much half shaded. That said, these have re retained a 100% charge dips a little bit at night, but they always charge back up to 100%. And that is important because you don't want to have to climb ladders and haul your cameras down. You do still want to make sure they get sunlight, but it's done a really good job keeping the batteries topped up. These cameras boast better sensing and better AI, and that is because of this little goober down here. These cameras don't have that. Um, so this one has the radar and PIR sensors. and. I can honestly say I have not had a single false alarm with either of these. With some of my other cameras, I have gotten false alarms where it thinks a hose reel or a propane tank is a person. And I don't think my head looks like a propane tank. I also have pet detection set up because I have koi in the backyard and raccoons like to eat them. So this thing will alert you if animals are coming by, which is nice. Um, it says pet, but it's really animal in general. So if you're in an area where you have coyotes that try to eat your chickens or uh, other critters that try to eat your koi fish like me, it'll let you know that they're coming so you can go do something about it. So those are kind of the highlight, the bragging points of this camera, but now let's hit that pro and con because that's really the important part so you can decide whether this is something that you wanna spend your hard earned money on. Now we'll do the pros first and then the cons. Talk about a lot of the pros already and what this thing is doing, but a couple other neat things that I ran across in the app. Um, it has a different viewing feature for viewing the footage on this camera than it has on the other cameras, where when you click on the camera, you can go back through clips on that particular camera and not have to sort through all of them. So pulling clips is a lot easier, and I haven't seen that feature in my other cameras. Hopefully that will come out in an update, but I actually really like that. It, it made pulling footage really easy if you have to pull footage. 
Now in almost every single video I do that's a tech review video, I get asked, whatever the device is, is it compatible with Apple HomeKit? Definitely every Eufy security camera video I get asked that, and oftentimes I have to say no. I'm happy to report, yes, this and these cameras are compatible with Apple HomeKit with two pretty important caveats that you need to know about. The first is you will need HomeBridge. So you don't just hook these straight to HomeKit, you will need a HomeBridge setup to have that work. And the second is HomeKits only work in 1080p. These are 4K cameras. So if you're using these in the app through this, not with HomeKit, you're getting full 4K. If you're using it through HomeKit, you're getting 1080. I don't know why. Uh, the last time I had 1080 cameras on the house were 10 years ago or something like that. This is not a Eufy issue, this is an Apple issue. And Apple, if you're listening, and I know you're probably not, but if you are, you probably don't care. Why? Why? You make screens, I'm looking at a screen right here that is higher resolution than 4K, but your home kit was 1080? I'm an Apple fanboy. I got this, I got, I got Apple stuff everywhere. But Apple, come on, you can do better. And the other thing is the 24 seven recording. I wasn't able to test that because it's not enabled yet. I'm supposed to be able to plug a USB cable into the back of this thing and have this thing run 24 seven, just doing loop record. And that hasn't been enabled yet. And Eufy says it will be enabled sometime after the launch, but they haven't said when that sometime is. So hopefully that'll come out soon so we can play around with that. I will update in the pinned comment down below once that is happening and how well it's working for me. Other positives just to talk about is um, the hooking up and installing experience with these has always been really easy. This has been straightforward, just like all the other ones. It's simple to set up through the app. If you have questions or run into issues, leave me a comment down below. I'm helping people out so I can help you out through the installation process if you need it. But I'll also have linked down below my other Eufy videos where I show how to hook this thing up, how to stick the hard drive in it. Pop, top pops off, it goes in there. So the setup process is actually very simple. You don't need to be a, a real techie person to do it. Now, I went over all the pros, but nothing's perfect. So now let's get into the cons. And even though I was very happy with this camera and I'm impressed, there were a couple things that I ran into. The first thing is just something to be aware of, and that is just the pure size of this thing. Um, the camera itself, it is a big camera. It is bigger, a lot bigger than one of their earlier cameras, and even the predecessor to this one with the solar panel, it's bigger. One thing I ran into was I had this thing mounted underneath the front eave of my house. And you can see they are different in size, different enough that this one would not fit in the same location. I'm gonna have to relocate the mount a little further down. The other thing is the weight. This thing is significantly heavier than their other cameras. And the problem I was having was on the back of my house, I have it mounted. And what was happening was the weight was actually pulling the camera down. Something I didn't realize is the mounts that come with this new camera are new mounts. They look the same, but they're not. They actually have, if you open it up, they have a little ratcheting system in here that when this thing comes in, it almost clicks in place once you select the spot and you crank this thing down. That'll prevent it from pivoting in this direction. The other issue is this direction. And this thing, the little ball in here is knurled. And the other one was knurled, but this one grips a lot better. There's some different materials used in here. This is a little grippier in here as well. So you need to switch your mounts out. You can't cheat like I tried to. The good news is the whole pattern on these are exactly the same. So if you have the old mounts, you can take them down and put the new ones up. But just be aware that you're gonna have to replace the mounts, which it comes with, as well as the camera itself. Now I do believe in brutal honesty on this channel and I know I've said a lot of good things about this camera and I've pointed out a few little bad things, but one bad thing did happen. It actually happened with this camera right here. When I first set it up, every image I had looked like this. Purple. And what that is, is that is infrared light getting into the sensor. Now, if you've ever had one of these cameras, let me grab another one over here. If you ever had one of these things, in your house and you turn the lights off in the house, you'll hear it clicking. What's happening inside this camera, this camera, pretty much any security camera that has infrared night vision is there is a UV ultraviolet filter that flips down over the lens when it's daylight. When it goes into night vision mode, it removes it. So with that UV filter in place, everything looks correct. If it's off during daylight, it's seeing all that UV light and it's turning your image purple. This thing's filter was stuck off and I couldn't get it to come back on. Couldn't figure out why. 
So I reached out to Yufi and I told them what was going on and um, they had suggested taking it, going into the night vision settings and clicking in and out of night, night vision with infrared to regular, infrared, regular, while this thing was obscured so it thought it was dark out. That popped it free and it's been running fine ever since. But that was an issue that I did have with one of the two cameras, but we got it fixed. So good news there. And one last thing that I wanted to point out was that if you are using this thing in the color night vision mode, you are still gonna have a more pixelated image, a grainier image, than if you were using it with the spotlight or the IR spotlight. So if you're using this as a security device and you want to be able to clearly identify people, you may still be better off using it in either infrared mode or with the spotlight so you get a very clear image of the face. Now, if this camera system does interest you, I am gonna have links down below. And if I ever come across any coupons or deals or anything like that, for these cameras, I always post them down below so you get the best deals that you possibly can. Now, if you, did run into any questions or comments or concerns during this video, I always welcome the feedback. As you can tell in this video, I actually changed how I do some of my testing based on feedback I've gotten in my other videos. So please leave me a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope this video helped you make an informed decision whether the Eufy S3 Pros is the right security camera for you. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, all that good YouTuber stuff. And of course, thanks for watching.